Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Blueprints creation series. In today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to create a basic scoring system using collectibles. Having said that, inside of my scene here you can see I've got some basic collectible items that are rotating, looking shiny and uh, they also have some great functionality. So when I go ahead and run over them, you can see the object explodes and it prints a value on the screen. And that value is actually attached to a scoring system that I've created. So having said that, we're going to be showing you how to create this scoring system, some of the maths used and the functions used and all that good stuff in today's episode. So just to break it down, I'm going to go ahead and show you the blueprints that I've got for this. So the first one I've got here is the uh, the point actor and this is essentially a rotating cube and it has a collision and once the player actually collides with that collision, um, it goes ahead and does some stuff. That stuff being the uh, you know the scoring system, and it also plays the sound, destroys the object, and also plays an emitter. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at the event graph to try and break it down. So the uh, is this is actually using two blueprint scripts. The first one is for the uh, coin itself or the object itself, the, whatever you're using, whatever your collectible is. The first one is that collectible, and that's just going to essentially destroy the actor, play an emitter, play a sound, and it's also going to have a bunch of fancy stuff attached to it, like my text uh, text render to say collect, um, collect me, it also has a light and some rotation motion, this is all the visual side inside of this first blueprint actor and uh, blueprint script. The second one is actually the scoring side, which is slightly more complicated, as it actually uses some uh, in variables and some maths and then it also just prints that um, but we're going to be going over that today so let's just go ahead and start off by creating um, a new collectible item you can use this for whatever kind of gameplay mechanic you're using really you can use these variables to attach it to your own uh, scoring system um, but for now let's just go ahead and uh, show you how we created this so the first thing we need to do is create a new blueprint actor and this blueprint actor is going to contain the object itself, the collectible item. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this point uh, point collect, and I'm just going to go ahead and create that as an actor. Just type in point and then collect. To create that, just right click in the content browser and add a new blueprint class. From there, let's just go ahead and open this up. Now inside here, we need to add a few things. So the first and most important thing is going to be the object itself. So I'm just going to type in cube and we're going to add in a basic shape and cube. If you want to, you can change this to your own mesh. So if it was something like Sonic, you could change that to some kind of coin. Um, or if it's for a horror game and you have a light and you need batteries for that, you could change it to a battery. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to use this as a cube and I'm going to add a material on this and for this we're just going to use the gold material which comes with the starter content. It looks quite fancy and does the job for now. I'm also going to add in a point light just like that and I'm going to change the color of that to a nice lovely orange. Right now I'm just trying to show you just how much you can actually add to this uh, collectible. If you wanted to you could also add in the rotating uh, movement which actually spins it around and you can control the speed of that just go ahead and click that and then just change the rotation rate if you want to I'm gonna change this to 45 nice slow spin gonna add a quick text render as well to add collect me to it and you can follow along with this you don't actually have to add in all the actual uh, visual stuff that I'm adding but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you it like I said it's just to show you the uh, range of customization you can do now with uh, text render there's one slight problem it doesn't update straight away so what you actually have to do is uh, go ahead and drag it into the scene and then it will update you can see it says collect me when we open that again if we go ahead and go to viewport we can drag that collect me text along just like that and we can resize it if we want to so I'm going to set this to 1.5 1.5 and that is on the X and the Y scale you don't get Z as it's only a 2D plane uh, in 3D space so let's go ahead and centralize this and now for the most important part we need to add the collision so once the player collides with this we can start adding all of this functionality so to do that just go up to add component again and we're going to add in box collision and once you've got that box collision just go ahead and make sure you've got it scaled properly. It's slightly smaller than the box itself at the moment, so just play around with the size of the text and the box. Just go ahead and scale those down. 
Uh, you might have to do those individually to get the best results, but try and make sure the, uh, the box is contained within the box collision. So go ahead and drag this down. And you may need to make the box collision a little bit bigger. Just play around with it however you feel uh, is you know right for you. Just like that, that should be okay for me. I'm just going to make sure that when I actually drag this object into the scene, it comes out about the right size. Looks perfect to me. So now it's time to actually start with the scripting side. So first things first, we need to work with collision. So having said that, that we're using collision, just go ahead and click the box collision right click it and go to add event for box the event here is going to be when the player touches it so we're going to use add on component begin overlap click that and now we can start doing stuff so the first thing we need to do is destroy the actor this will destroy the object when the player runs over it so just go ahead and drag this out and type in destroy actor and that will get rid of everything if you was to use destroy component it would only get rid of one thing one by one so you could only get rid of the cube or the point light or the box or whatever. Now we've got, got this item destroyed if we go ahead and uh, drag it into the corner here and we go and run up to it let's just see that it actually does destroy itself if I can find the right corner here it is jump into it it destroys doesn't look too fancy if you want to you can add in the emitter as well so uh, spawn emitter and we're going to use that at location and we're going to do the same for a sound as well. So play sound and we're going to do that at location. We need to define the sounds and the emitter as well. Um, for now I'm just going to use a explosion particle effect uh, which does look quite nice and for the sound you can use pretty much whatever you want. You can also use the explosion sound if you like. You do need to set the location. The location we're just going to get that from the actor. So to do this we're going to use get actor location and then we're just going to hook up the return value into the location for both of those. So now if we go ahead and compile this, press play and we run into our new one, our new actor over here, it explodes and makes a slight little sound here and it's kind of cool. So next we need to go into the third person uh, character blueprint. Just open up your character blueprint, it doesn't matter what project you're working for, um, just make sure it is actually for the character. So let's go ahead and do that. So find it wherever it is. I don't know where it is in your project, but for me, it's going to be in the starter content and then third person BP. Go into blueprints and then third person character. You can see I've also uh, already got my basic script here, and uh, that's pretty much what we need to recreate. If you have a look at this, it just casts the object to the point out uh, point actor, so we can actually communicate with it. And then we just have some basic maths to set a variable and then print that variable. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this and we're going to show you from the beginning just how we did this. Uh, so the first thing you need to do here is delete, uh, so is create a variable. You can call this whatever you want really. I'm just going to go ahead and call this uh, points for now. And we need to change this to an integer. The reason for this is it allows us to set this variable to a numeric value. Um, a boolean is going to be true and false. A byte is, you know, an 8-bit number. An integer is slightly longer. You got floats, you got strings. Um, I'm not going to explain all of those in too much detail. Um, but for now, just go ahead and use an integer. Integer as it allows us to work with numbers. So now we've done that, let's just go ahead and add a begin overlap. Um, so now we can assign on actor begin overlap and we're just going to do it just like this. We're going to go ahead and delete this, sorry, right click and type in begin overlap and go ahead and find the event actor begin overlap just like this. And now we need to drag out the other actor. So what we need to do here is cast to and then whatever we called our point actor or point collect, whichever one it was. I think uh, it doesn't matter really because they're both the same. Just make sure you got your point, uh, you know, collectible blueprint hooked up into this. And from here, we need to start doing our maths now. So let's go ahead and hook this up to something simple. And this is going to be setting a variable. And this is how we're going to set up our point system really. We're just going to be changing the variable once the player collides with this object using the begin overlap. Now, the reason why we're putting all of this maths and the scoring system in the player blueprint instead of the coin 
uh, well not the coin, sorry, the point blueprint is because each time you destroy the actor it will reset the variable and we don't want that. We want something that stays constant and that's going to be the character. So we're actually going to attach the scoring system to the character. So let's just go ahead and do this. So we need to drag off the cast to and we're going to hook this up to um, set. And we're going to go ahead and set a value. So go ahead and drag in points and go to set. And then just hook this up just like that and boom. Now we can actually uh, play around with some maths. So we could set points to zero if we wanted to with this, but we need to uh, do some maths. Instead of just setting it to zero every time, we need to do plus one. So to do that, just go ahead and right click and type in integer plus integer. You can see we've got a whole bunch of other maths functions here like multiply, divide, plus, minus and so on. Just go ahead and do integer plus integer as it's going to allow us to do 1 plus 1 or the current value plus 1 each time. So go ahead and do that and then we're going to go ahead and drag in points, press get and we're going to hook it up to here. So now it's the original value plus 1 as you can see here and that goes over to the set node. And now once we've done that, we've got all of our maths that we need and what we need to do here is print string. This print string is essentially going to show the player how many points he's got. So go ahead and drag this in and drag this out and it will actually allow us to convert our integer to a string and display it on the screen using this little node here. So if we go ahead and press compile and then if we go jump in the game, you can see it actually displays our points on the screen in the top left. If it doesn't, <coughs> there's something wrong. So let's just go ahead and see why that is. The reason for that being that we've got the point actor is the blueprint. We've got the wrong one. Over here, we've actually got point collect. The reason for this not working is because I've got two blueprints. I'm just going to make sure I've got in the right one. So instead of point collect, I'm going to put in point actor. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now if we press play, possess. And run into it you can see it presses uh, it does one the first time two the second time and we can keep going on and on and on and you can see that we sort of get a score but that's pretty much everything that I want to teach you for this tutorial play around with it you can customize it to your game however you like uh, keep in mind you can do loads of stuff with this uh, don't limit it to just adding a value you know you could do it to uh, levels so you can fire off new levels when you get a certain amount of points or anything you like really so thanks for watching comment like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode goodbye